first major trophy of the Scottish season is up for grabs as Dundee United and Rangers contest the CIS Cup final here at Hampden Park. Barry Ferguson, as usual, leading out Rangers. Lee Wilkie leading out Dundee United with the two managers at the front of the queue, of course, Craig Levine and Walter Smith. Hamden is ready to roar as Dundee United and Rangers go up for the Cup, the 2008 CIS Insurance Cup. Eddie Thompson, the chairman of Dundee United, who is fighting cancer, and the players are desperate to win the trophy today for him. Rangers, though, have gone two seasons without a trophy. That's a long time for them. Incredibly, they're still in the hunt for four trophies this season. The SPL, the Scottish Cup, the Scottish League Cup and the UEFA Cup. Walter Smith's side are one busy team at the moment. Craig Levine has totally transformed Dundee United. He took charge just 17 months ago. The players being introduced to Simon Butler. And representatives from the sponsors CIS Insurance. Rangers have won the League Cup a record 24 times. Next best, their rivals in Glasgow, Celtic, with 13, not even close. Dundee United won it twice under legendary manager Jim McLean in the early 80s. His assistant manager in those days was one Walter Smith, now in charge of Rangers for a second time. And Walter also played for Dundee United. That was a good few years ago, mind you. Let's take a look at today's teams. Craig Levine has sprung a couple of surprises. Mikhail Kovacevic only made his debut at Celtic midweek. His second game is a cup final. He's preferred to Sean Dillon, and Gary Kenneth is preferred to Darren Dodds. 15-goal Noel Hunt missed two cup finals through injury when at Dunfermline. He's finally made one. Lee Wilkie's had an injury-stricken career. He missed a cup final with Dundee. Could he now lift a trophy with Dundee United? Well, they're keen to play two up front, but that could change to 4-5-1 if needs be, with Hunt and Flood shifting out wide. That's the way they've played for much of the season. Wilkie and Kenneth are certainly dominant defenders, but they'll find Lee McCulloch a handful for sure. Young midfielders Buaben and Gomez have both performed admirably this season. Mark De Vries offers a considerable aerial threat. Rangers are short on numbers for this final with Nacho Novo and Charlie Adams suspended, Stephen Naismith cup tied, Daniel Kuzan injured. Despite the absence of three strikers, 18 goal Chris Boyd is only on the bench. Lee McCulloch has the lone striking role. At least Chris Burke has recovered from a bruised ankle. Christian Daly started his career with Dundee United and won the Scottish Cup with them 14 years ago. It's a familiar back line for Rangers. Weir and Quayla have been outstanding. Hemdani forms quite a barrier in front of them in a holding midfield role. Stephen Davis on loan from Fulham has added Kraft and Graft. They'll look to Burke to provide some crosses for McCulloch. will be supported by Barry Ferguson, making his presence felt in and around the box. Craig Levine heading towards his cancer-stricken chairman, Eddie Thompson. And desperate to deliver a trophy for the chairman. Kenny Clark is in charge of his third League Cup final. Dundee United have beaten Rangers in the league this season, so they know they are capable. It would still be considered a major surprise if they win today, but it is certainly possible. The last time these two teams met in this competition, it was in the semi-finals here three years ago. Rangers won 7-1 that day. There's a pretty good chance of a much closer contest 
on this day. Stephen Davis grew up supporting Rangers and had a trial with them as a 12-year-old. He's on loan from Fulham, and he's made quite an impact. Gary Kenneth launching that. And the free kick for Dundee United. Given away by Brahim Hendani. This is Carvanez. Mark De Vries is going to be useful. And it's a corner which will encourage Dundee United. David Weir wasn't so sure. And they certainly have some aerial power with Kenneth and Wilkie and De Vries. Rangers have their work cut out from set pieces, that is for sure. Ruaben has also moved into the danger zone. Carbonis with a corner, safely taken by Alan McGregor. Rangers' last domestic defeat came at Dundee United at the end of October. They went 20 games unbeaten before losing to Werder Bremen on, in midweek. A result that didn't matter, of course, because they went through on aggregate to the quarter-finals of the UEFA Cup. Dundee United were also in midweek action. They held Celtic to a 0-0 draw in Glasgow. No mean feat. Burke. Here's Papach. Well, Burke felt he was fouled. Chris Burke was a doubt for this final, and Rangers have already got a few missing. He bruised an ankle in training, but he has made it. The sun is shining on Hampden Park. Hendani. This is Lee Wilkie. Not the greatest of touches from Willow Flood, Christian Daly. Burke. And the free kick goes in favour of Burke who was on the fringe of things for most of the season, pretty much out of favour. It's only in the past couple of months that he's figured properly. Christian Daly facing his former club. Quaylar in there as well. And it's a corner for Rangers now. And Christian Daly for club and for country throughout his career has always been a threat in these kind of situations. Weir and Quaylar and McCulloch are there as well. And it's McCulloch who met that. The lone striker for Rangers today. Nacho Novo is suspended. Stephen Maysmith is cut tied and Daniel Kuzan is injured. But they have got two strikers on the bench, having said that, in Chris Boyd and Jean-Claude Darcheville. <laughs> Broadfoot's throw. A free kick. Walter Smith in his second spell as Rangers manager, alongside him the legend that is Ali McCoy, who scored quite a few goals during his first spell as manager.
Kovacevic keeping his eye on that. Here's Kerr. Carbonez. De Vries. Carbonez with the cross. Duarden nearby. And Old Hunt had nowhere to go. Kovacevic with the throw. Buarben. Here's Gomez. Kerr. Spreading it to Calvinez. Handball shout from the Rangers fans. Stephen Davis. Mark Kerr tidying up. Now Gary Kenneth preferred to Darren Dodds in the starting lineup. Kovacevic. Kerr. These two teams have met in the League Cup final twice before in 1981 and 1984, and Rangers won on both occasions, but then they have won their last eight League Cup finals. Broadfoot has certainly made the most of Alan Hutton's departure to Spurs. He's made that right-back spot his own now. Tangling there with Noel Hunt. Rangers perhaps a little fortunate to get the free kick. Burke, Papach. Here's Hemdani. Papach, Burke, Rangers threatening, but it's safely gathered by Lukas Zaluska, Polish keeper who missed the first half of the season through injury. His fellow Pole, Gregor Zamatolski, came in and did a grand job. Zaluska is the main man now, and he wasn't particularly tested by that effort from Burke. This is Willow Flood. Decent delivery, away by Quayla. It's a fairly open cup final so far. Lee Wilkie. It's going nowhere fast from Wilkie, who took over the captaincy from Barry Robson when he left for Celtic in January. That was inviting from Willow Flood, and De Vries was waiting to pounce. And just as well for Rangers that Carlos Cuellar managed to hook that away. Manji Cuellar has been outstanding all season. He looks a real class act. Came from Osasuna. On by De Vries for Hunt. Kerr. Kovacevic. Mark Kerr. Goes back to Wilkie. Now Kenneth. Willow Flood, who's on loan from Cardiff. They could be playing in the FA Cup final. He's playing in the CIS final here at Hamden. Flood. Hunt. Flood again. 
Robin for Gomez. Willow Flood. Broadford over the top of De Vries. Free kick for Rangers. Mark De Vries played for Craig Levine at Hart and at Leicester. And he made a back there for Broadford. Broadfoot. Rangers playing in their 31st League Cup final. Dundee United playing in their sixth. Misjudged by Burke. Kovacevic. Willow Flood forsaking the chance to go to Wembley with Cardiff. Craig Levine has had him on loan all season. Levine has already found a bit to write about. In by Flood for De Vries. And McGregor gathers. Rangers slack. Broadfoot giving Flood a glimmer of hope. Christian Daly got back to close in on De Vries. Gomez, Guaben. Carbonez. Up towards Gomez. Noel Hunt preparing to launch it and some big boys to aim for including Wilkie Calvinez that has skipped out before it reached Hunt Davis, Hamdani, now Barry Ferguson who hasn't seen much of the ball yet. Dundee United would quite like to keep it that way, I'm sure. Gary Kenneth, who played in the 2005 Scottish Cup final here when Dundee United lost to Celtic and their winning goal deflected in off his heel. He also gave away a penalty which was missed. Hoping for better luck at Hamden today. Christian Daly catching Willow Flood. Kenny Clark, the referee, just having a quick word with Noel Hunt, who's putting himself about, and Lee Wilkie will certainly do the same. It's Willow Flood to take the free kick. McGregor's going to claim that, though. Had a superb night in Bremen midweek to keep Werder Bremen at bay and clinch a place in the last eight of the UEFA Cup for Rangers. The side flag is up. And in the UEFA Cup, Rangers will play Sporting Lisbon and that will give them a chance of reaching the semis. Barry Ferguson will be hoping to get to grips with the CIS Cup later. Hendani screening his defence. Gomez. Robin 
on the half volley. Horribly off target, but he has been a success story for Dundee United this season. 19-year-old Ghanaian, who was at Ajax, but couldn't get a work permit to stay there. And Dundee United snapped him up on a three-year deal. I think he was considered one for the future, but he's been a regular in the team all season. Dundee United beat Ross County, Falkirk, Hamilton and Aberdeen to get to the final. They blew Aberdeen away in the semi-finals, 4-1. Rangers overcame East Fife, Motherwell, and Hearts. The Glasgow Giants still gunning for four trophies this season, amazingly. Which is ironic, because they haven't won a trophy for two seasons. And that's a long wait for a club of the size and stature of Rangers. They don't normally go one season without a trophy, let alone two. Davis with the centre, and it's bounced off Lee Wilkie. Barry Ferguson had got himself right in there. Stephen Davis, the provider. And Ferguson did actually get a flick. And Dundee United is fortunate that he went behind. Off Wilkie, could have easily headed towards goal. Chris Burke's corner. Seems to catch McCulloch right in the face. Dundee United don't care. Noel Hunt is tearing away and he's got Willow Flood with him. Terrific work from Hunt. Here's Kerr. Carbonez. Willow Flood sidestepping Barry Ferguson. How many do that? Flood towards De Vries, away by Papac. Dundee United will keep the pressure on with Kovacevic. De Vries. And away by Kirk Broadfoot. Rangers certainly not allowed to find any rhythm yet. These teams have met twice in the SPL this season. One win apiece. They actually meet again at Tannadice in a few weeks' time. One of them will be holding the CIS Cup by then. No doubt showing it off. And Darling. Gomez hounding Papac. Kerr. Gary Kenneth. Zaluska in the Dundee United goal will be cheered on by one of his best mates today, the Celtic goalkeeper Arthur Boric. No fan of Rangers, that's for sure. Quayla. Burke. Papach alongside him. Christian Daly for Stephen Davis. Broadfoot waiting to receive. Broadfoot in. That's a fantastic save from Zaluska. Barry Ferguson nearly opening the scoring for Rangers. McCulloch left it for him. That was close. Clever little dummy from McCulloch. And Barry Ferguson let rip. Straight at Zaluska, I guess. Carbonez. Onto the chest of Carlos Cuellar. Davis. McCulloch. Ferguson chasing. But big Lee Wilkie's across. And Ferguson has got it though. Mark Kerr has lost out now to Stephen Davis. 
Broadfoot, and it's off Willow Flood. Momentary panic for Dundee United. Broadfoot's throw. McCulloch on the overhead kick, away by Flood. A miscue there from uh, Boabin. Daly. Papach. A wild delivery. Not cleared effectively by Calvinis, though. Gomez keeping Davis occupied. Ferguson up against Kenneth. Davis. And Zaluska will grab that. Lee McCulloch was a striker in his Motherwell days, but down at Wigan, he often played on the left side of midfield. And became more known for that, really. But he's been preferred to Chris Boyd in that lone striking role. And Jean-Claude Darsfield, they're both on the bench. Darsfield just coming back from a hamstring injury. That's probably why he's not starting. Useful firepower, though, on the bench for Rangers, should they require it. And the early suggestions are that they might well do. <laughs> Broadfoot's throw. McCulloch, Broadfoot's cross. Caused consternation for Dundee United, but Willow Flood can bring it away. Gomez calling for it inside. Here's Noel Hunt. Carlos Cuellar fancied a bit of that. It certainly wouldn't come down for Gomez. Mark Kerr delivers. Confident catch again from Alan McGregor, who's having a splendid season for Rangers. Must be a serious contender, in fact, for Craig Gordon's Scotland jersey. Scotland have a game soon against Croatia, friendly. Here's Burke. Burke taking on Kovacevic. Sasa Papac is actually in the box there. Hasn't scored for Rangers. And certainly in nosebleed territory there, but he's out of position now. Well, that is his position over there, but David Weir has covered it. Just overcooked, though, for Burke. past the midway point of the first half of the CIS Cup final. Barry Ferguson packing a punch. But it was straight in Zaluska's eye line. Ferguson. Papach. Hemdani. Next up for Rangers, a Scottish Cup quarter-final in midweek against Partick Thistle. Cup games galore going on at the moment. Broadfoot, just flicked away by Gary Kenneth. Kovacevic, a surprise starter ahead of Sean Dillon, when he made his debut at Celtic in midweek. Born in Switzerland of Slovenian origin. Now Burke. Kovacevic has given him far too much room there, but Gary Kenneth cleared it. 
Mel Hunt now will hold it up. De Vries. That'll be a free kick. Carlos Coelho will come a long way to commit a foul on Kovacevic. Kovacevic then with this free kick. In towards Hunt. Ferguson away to Burke. Papach for Hemdani. Now Weir. Quayla. Carlos Cuellar's only regret about uh, moving to Scotland was the fact that he had to leave his pet behind in Spain. Mind you, his pet is a 20-foot snake called Titan. I doubt if he would have lasted long on the streets of Glasgow. Christian Bailey spent a couple of months on loan at Southampton earlier in the season from West Ham and now has moved north to Rangers. If you told him a few weeks ago he'd be playing in a cup final in Hampden, he probably would have dismissed it out of sight. Daly, a Scottish Cup winner with them, the United, in 1994 when they beat Rangers and denied Rangers back-to-back -back trebles. Daly all over Mark de Vries. It's met by Broadfoot. Harry Kenneth trying to put himself about. Buaben in towards De Vries. And McGregor is struggling. And Papach had to sneak it away for a corner. Uncomfortable this for the Rangers keeper. It definitely wasn't impeded. The Rangers rather fortunate to escape. Lee Wilkie posing a problem. It's Christian Carvanes then to float this corner in. McGregor's having some of that. And he got to it a little slightly easier than the last time. He does have a winner's medal in this competition, Alan McGregor, but only because he was on the bench when Rangers won it in 2003. McGregor rather relieved to survive that scare. Davis. Broadfoot. Zaluska and Kenneth avoiding a mix-up. It's been a good 2008 so far for Dundee United. They've only lost twice. One of those defeats was against Rangers in the league at Ibrox. The other was St Mirren in the Scottish Cup. Mark de Vries nearly sneaking in then. Half-hearted plea that it came off Broadfoot. But it was the... In fact, it might have just taken a nick off Broadfoot, although they had it already crossed the line. Mark Kerr. Christian Carbonet. Carlos Cuellar underneath that. 
Davis. Ferguson. Daly. That's poor from Davis. Duarben is joined by Kovacevic. He's pushed it past Papac, but Chris Burke is going to sort him out. Hemdani. Always ready to put out any fires. Rangers last won this competition in 2005 when they beat Motherwell 5-1. They were 2-0 up inside nine minutes on that day, had a much easier time of it than it's proving so far today. Hunt. Hapach and Burke doubling up. But Hunt is certainly tenacious. This is Gomez, Kerr, perhaps a little ambitious from there, doesn't score too many, M Mark Kerr, in fact he hasn't scored for two years. Well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it in a cup final, but that never looked too likely. Not at all. Gomez. Kerr. Gomez wants it again. He's got it. Now Ferguson. We're going to look around. He's about to be joined by Burke, but it's just gone outside of him. Christian Daly calling for it. Here he is, Ferguson. He's already won the League Cup four times, Barry Ferguson. Gunning for it again, scored in the semi-final victory over Hearts here. That was his last goal. Daly, Gomez, up against Davis. Mark Kerr got involved, though, for Dundee United. Kerr having to turn away from Daly. Gary Kenneth going long to De Vries. And now Hunt. Hunt beaten away by McGregor. Here's Dwarben. De Vries, Hunt surely, can he force it in? Yes, he can! Dundee United score first in the CIS Cup final. Jumping for joy, Noel Hunt. Tangerine dreams come true. It's a goal that means so much to Noel Hunt. It's come in a cup final against Rangers. And when he was at Dunfermline, he missed two cup finals through injury. He's just made up for it. Hunt just managed to force this in. It was close. <laughs> He's lethal from that range. Stephen Davis tried to dig it out, but Hunt was having none of that. Not the best somersault you'll ever see. Not the best goal you'll ever see, but Craig Levine and Dundee United are in front, and Eddie Thompson in front of him, suffering from cancer. Delighted to the owner and chairman of the club. Well, how will Rangers respond to that? Wilkie sends that back to Zaluska.
Ten minutes of the first half remaining. Noel Hunt's 16th goal of the season. He came on as a late sub against Celtic in midweek, Noel Hunt, they were saving him for today. His brother Stephen plays in the Premier League in England with Reading. Rangers rattle. Dundee United, a goal to the good. Of course, when you're up against the old firm, a second goal would come in rather handy. Kenny Clark having words with Christian Daly. And another opportunity beckons for Dundee United. Willow Flood ready to send this in. Gomez came off Hendani and De Vries didn't really get much power in it, allowing McGregor to gather. David Weir. Ferguson, Burt chasing this, McCulloch in the middle, so is Davis. Burt has lost out though, Mark Kerr. With an important challenge to deny a delivery from Burt. Here's Buab and the young Ghanaian. And Quelar beats De Vries to it. Very Kenneth composed, very composed. Calvin is now, Rangers are on the rack a bit. Dundee United sniffing a possible second. Morgaro Gomez. Buarben. Flood. And he's managed to pick out Kovacevic. David Weir. Met the cross. Rangers with two strikers on the bench in Void and Darshville, and the way it's going so far, we might see one of them sooner rather than later. They're not really offering much in this final. Gary Kenneth will steer that back to his keeper. He's had a fine game so far. Only 20 years of age. There are some young boys in this Dundee United team. They will be pretty excited about the way things are going so far, but here's Ferguson. Kenneth there to meet it again. And it's going to drop for Boabin. It's Willow Flood. Now, Gomez. Dundee United flowing forward. Gomez and Papac having to turn that away for a corner because De Vries was right behind him. It's a determined display from Dundee United, this. They lead Rangers. Mel Hunt scrambling a goal. And now, De Vries and Co looking for another. Minor hush around Hamden as Willow Flood sends the corner in, but there's been a bit of pushing and shoving from Gary Kenneth, I think. And that will be a free kick. We're into the final five minutes of the first half. It's been a busy time for Rangers lately. But Dundee United also played in midweek. 
although they did rest one or two. Those Rangers couldn't really do that against Werder Bremen. Smith will have some thinking to do at half time, that is for sure. Lee McCulloch as a lone striker and Barry Ferguson just on, off him. Not really working out too well at the moment. But there are goals galore sat on that bench in Dashville and Boyd. It's the Dundee United fans who are rejoicing at the moment at Hampden Park. away by Kenneth Kenneth there again here's the goal scorer Noel Hunt on the prowl once more Gomez nearby he's not hanging around but it's cleared by Quaylar only to Willow Flood Kerr takes over bounced off Buaben but now Carbonez and now Buaben and here's Hunt and Carbonez. Christian Carbonez scored on his debut for Dundee Dundee against Rangers a few years ago. On by McCulloch for Ferguson. Now Stephen Davis. Ferguson. Well, that sums up Rangers half, really. A miserable effort on his left foot from the Rangers captain. He scored a few spectacular goals in his time, but I can't believe he ever thought he was going to get one from there. Walter Smith in conversation with his... Coaching staff, Ali McCoy and Kenny McDowell. And you could see a change coming at half-time, perhaps, or if not, certainly early in the second half. Rangers trailing to Dundee United with half-time fast approaching. Ferguson can Rangers grab an equaliser before half time Papach oh, I don't know what Burke was doing there it was never going to reach him and he made no effort to get near the ball not the best pass from Papach but even so Davis. Now he's put it through for Burke. Promising this for Rangers. But Gary Kenneth commanding again. In the last minute of normal time at the end of the first half, and Dundee United could break out here. Buaben and Gomez linking up. And he's still going. Now De Vries. And De Vries. Couldn't hustle and bustle his way past David Weir. He calmly turns away from the Dutchman. But then presents it to Kenneth. Calvinus. Gomez. Calvinez. De Vries challenging Papac. He's nearly dribbled in. It's nearly 2 0 on the stroke of half time. Carlos. Quayla got back on the line to rescue what would have been an own goal. And a free kick now for Dundee United as we move into one minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half. And they have a chance here to score a second, and that really would be Dundee United Dreamland.
Gary Kenneth moving menacingly into the box. Wilkie De Vries. Kenneth, big boys for Calvinist to aim for in first half stoppage time. It's going to be a corner. Rangers desperate to hear that whistle. McGregor can't believe the decision has gone against them. He's raging. Ferguson making his point as well. A dubious corner as far as Rangers are concerned. The minute of stoppage time is up then, this will be the last action of the first half. It's Willow Flood to send it in. Kenneth is there, and that is half-time, and the half has certainly belonged to Dundee United. They lead Rangers by a goal to nil, a goal scrambled in by Noel Hunt to give Craig Levine's side a deserved lead, really. Hunt, who missed two cup finals with Dunfermline through injury, has made up for it today with Dundee United, and that lot are starting to dream that they could be lifting the CIS Cup. Half time, it's Dundee United 1, Rangers 0. Not pretty, but very effective from Noel Hunt. I'm on my own in studio today. Where is it? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to I'm on Satanta Sports. You are now doing it on me too much. I cannot answer all your emails. And also you are hitting on me 250 million times on the YouTube. You have created a monster. Very, very, very handsome monster. Very good. And now the news. No news. I have no news. Except, of course. Say it. At home. Do it. I'm... very nice. Calls, line one. Hello, caller. Hello. Wenger, I told you to stop watching my show. I have no interest in your ridiculous show. What do you want? I merely wish to complain about your recent press conference. Which part of press conference? What do you mean? Was it part when I said I will be champion at top European club again next year? No. Was it part when I said I am free to manage top Premier League club in England again very soon? No, it was part you said you wanted to kill Chelsea. Of course, why not? Well, I believe it demonstrates a deficiency of the soul. Soul? My soul is a champion. But there must be an emptiness in the soul. No, it is completely full. My soul is bulging and brimming. What do you talk about, Voyeur? Well, I think that... Line two, hello, caller? Hello, is Arsene there? Yes. Arsene, I think he might have been a bit heavy-handed with the boy there. Stay out of this, please. No, go on, Mr. Alex, please. Well, I'm just saying, Arsene. I thought the boy had a lot of interesting things to say about people. What people? Well, people. Hmm? Different types of people. People in charge of top, top clubs. They haven't won anything in three years. Going around with the massive superiority complex kind of people, Arsene. Stop playing games with me, please. I think maybe this is an emptiness of the trophy cupboard. You are attempting a pincer movement on me. Calm down, Arsene. Take it easy. I am calm. You see what I'm talking about? He is passive-aggressive. Stop it. You must finish it. There is no need for bad language, Wenger. That's an absolute disgrace. Family show. But I did Goodbye, not... caller. <coughs> Terrible shame. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Sorry about that. Ah, it's not a problem. Mm. By the way, don't forget that bottle of 68 shadow next to the pap. Pretty boy. Goodbye, Mr. Alex. Now, it is time for my new item, Sven's Wonderful World of Football. This week, Sven has taken on very tricky assignment in Land of Goats and Guns. 
And to find out how he is getting on, we go over live now to Afghanistan. Hello, Sven. Can you hear me? Oh, well, yes. Hello. How is Kabul, Sven? It is more crazy than I ever thought. The situation, quite frankly, is out of control. That is terrible, Sven. And the mood on the ground? F fanatical. It's very scary. Everywhere I go, screaming. A general may. It must be very, very difficult for you, personally, Sven. How are you holding up? Well, I am very nervous now, but I don't know what to expect. At any moment, they could come to get me. I have to stay put. Oh, dear. Do you think you will ever get out? Ever? No, I don't know. At this moment, there are maybe four, five hundred of them outside, surrounding the building. I think it's only a matter of time. Sven! Wait. Sven! What? Now, mate! Now! Yes. You've got to come now! I'm... Let's do it! Go, 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 go! I'm ready. I have to go. I... Sven? Have we lost him? We seem to have lost our feet to Afghanistan. No, no, wait. We, we have it back. He's only been here 24 hours, but you've already taken him to your heart. Tonight, entertaining Britain's bravest. Let's hear it for me! Well, it's not on you, sure want to be loved by anyone. It's not on you, you want to have fun with anyone. Well, but when I see hanging above with anyone, no, it's not on you, you want to see me cry. Oh, I wanna die. Beat him. So Rangers are making a change at the start of the second half, and that's no great surprise. Brahim Hemdani has gone off, and on comes John Claude Darsville. And if anyone can get them a goal, he can. He's missed the last three games with a hamstring problem. In fact, he's had niggling injuries all season. He's never completed 90 minutes for Rangers, but he's on to aid their cause today. And they certainly needed some additional firepower. So Hemdani has gone off, and Darshaville has come on. Ten goals so far for him this season. And there's a good chance that he'll add to that tally today. Rangers desperately hoping he will. Rangers have gone two seasons without winning a trophy. If they are to end that rather miserable run by their standards, they're going to have to work for it, that's for sure, because Dundee United have a deserved lead in this cup final, given to them by Noel Hunt. And here is Hunt. Turned out by David Weir. Rangers still chasing four trophies. And they won't want this one to pass them by. Kerr. Dundee United were third in the SPL until yesterday when Hibs overtook them, but they're very much in the hunt for a European place. Rangers, three points clear of Celtic with a game in hand at the top, and still three old firm games to come in the league. Possibly one in the Scottish Cup as well. It's going to be an enthralling end of the season one way or another. Poor Rangers.
Forward foot will turn that back to Alan McGregor. McCulloch rising with Wilkie. And uh, Lee McCulloch has come off worse then, although the free kick has gone against him. The battle of the big men, Wilkie and McCulloch. You should see the other guy. McCulloch was the offender. Chris Burke hoping to provide some ammunition for the strikers. Rangers, remember, have won their last eight League Cup finals. They last lost one in 1989 to Aberdeen. Here's Willow Flood. Cannondorf Hunt. Rangers cried handball, but Hunt didn't know too much about it. Kerr. Up towards De Vries, away by Weir. Offside. It's a really busy time for Rangers, and they've still got three away games to rearrange in the SPL. Games at Celtic, St Mirren and Motherwell. It's going to be tricky, considering the league is supposed to split in a few weeks. And the bubble got the better of Stephen Davis then. Davis on loan from Fulham, who grabbed a vital victory in the Premier League today over Everton. Gomez stopped in his tracks by Broadfoot. Chris Burke has returned to the right now, more comfortable in that role, having played on the left in the first half. Is Willow Flood. Straight through to McGregor. Dashville. Powerful. Unable to return it though, McCulloch was waiting nearby. There weren't too many other options for Darsonville. Flood. Hunt. Shadowed by Burke and Broadfoot. rolled out off Hunt in the end and he's getting a fair bit of stick from the Rangers fans nearby <laughs> Harry Ferguson wanted to take that quickly but there were a couple of Dundee United players who stood in his way here's Papach Davis, Daly. Burke. Broadfoot making great strides if Burke can pick him out. And he's been kept occupied by Carbonez. Gomez quickly in. Ferguson ready to receive. And Ferguson across. And Wilkie and Kenneth just about managed to dig it out. Returned by Broadfoot, collected by Zaluska. Anxious for Dundee United. Gary Kenneth's touch didn't help Lee Wilkie much, but they got it away. Close call this.
Dundee United rather relieved that nothing came of that. Milky clearing before Darcyville could pounce. Papac. Daly. Flood. Oh, there's a bit of room here for Dundee United to exploit. Gomez away to Noel Hunt. Cleared by Carlos Cuela. Popped back by Carvanez. Carvanez again. And a mistake from Cuela. Half a claim from Dundee United that Carvanez was manhandled by the Spaniard, but not from the player himself. Got a foot wrong too many times this season. Darcyville on for Chris Burke. And the Willow Flood whips it away from Burke. Well, that was a late lunge. Carbonez on the receiving end, and we're going to get the first yellow card of this final Kirk Broadfoot receiving it. They can have no complaints, late, <laughs> very late. Well, Carbon is certainly clutched then by Coyla. There wasn't much of an appeal from the players out on the field, bizarrely, but there certainly was from Craig Levine and co on the touchline. Dundee United may have had a case. Calvin is still receiving treatment after that challenge on him by Kirk Crawford that brought about a yellow card. Well, let's see here. He certainly grabbed Calvin is. Carvinus maybe fell a little theatrically. Broadfoot's been booked. Carvinus hopeful that he'll be ready to resume. Greg Levine had a successful spell at Hearts, not so successful down in England with Leicester. But he's done a grand job with Dundee United in 17 months in charge. European contenders in the league. League Cup finalists. 1-0 up against Rangers in this final. Now De Vries. No foul. Ferguson. Has a look up, has a look around. He's joined by Papac. Carvinez is back on. And Gary Kenneth gets the free kick off Lee McCulloch. Painful fall for Kenneth. may be considered a surprise scoreline in the CIS Insurance Cup final. But it won't surprise Dundee United, they've had a good 2008 and a decent season all round. They've already beaten Rangers once in the league. Gomez now with a cross, and Papac just turned that away from De Vries. It's a corner kick. De Vries... Just beaten to it by Papach. (laughs) 
It's Willow Flood's corner. Turned away by David Weir, but it's going to come back to Flood. And Darsville blocking that. Another corner. Dundee United giving it a right of go in their search for silverware. Christian Carvanez with a poor corner straight at Davis. Trying to skip past Davis. Long throw time. And a rousing reception for the goal scorer. As he prepares to take this throw, here it comes from Hunt in towards Wilkie. Will it drop favourably for De Vries? Very nearly, very nearly. Boaba now. And Darsville could be on his way. He's not got much support yet, he might not need any. It's Darsville! And Zaluska just managed to get something on it, I think, to turn it into the side netting. A classic counter-attack from Rangers. Just took a big bubble there on the Hamden surface. Which didn't uh, distract Darsaville too much. Diverted into the side netting by Zaluska. Burt's corner, and Gary Kenneth met it. He's met a few today. Papas, four-header, straight up in the air. Rangers are going to bring Chris Boyd on soon, and that's no surprise either. Hasn't started too many games lately, and always frustrated when he comes on as a result. And he likes to take out that frustration on opponents. Kenny Clark calming Rangers down, if indeed that is possible. The hour mark is almost up. Rangers are a team in need, and that's why they're going to bring on a master goal poacher in Chris Boyd. Here's De Vries. Blocked by Weir. And here he is again, David Weir. Inside, just a bit. Darsville. Or was he? In fact... It's a pretty harsh call against Darsville, who was very sprightly. <laughs> Gomez. Carvanez. Ran into Christian Daly, but he's still going. Carlos Kralak comes across. Free kick now for Rangers. It's time for Chris Boyd. Rangers need rescuing, and this man is capable. Very, very capable. Sasa Papac is going to come off, so that's going to mean a bit of a rejig for Rangers. Chris Boyd once scored five goals in one game against Dundee United. Also in his time, he got a hat-trick against him at Tannadice. An astonishing 64 goals in 95 games for Rangers. A fantastic record. He's been stuck on the bench lately, much to his annoyance, because Walter Smith won't play him when Rangers go with a lone striker. But he's on now to try and save the day. Boyd's cross. Uh, Boyd in there waiting for the cross. Burke sent it back. Ferguson, Darsville. And Willow Flood took it away from the colour. Broadfoot ready for a long throw. 
Rangers desperate for an equaliser. Lee Wilkie. Not sure that McCulloch wasn't getting too near that. And Gary Kenneth just got enough on that. Darshville was lurking. Kirk Broadford has switched to left back now for Rangers with Christian Daly covering the right back position. Mark Kerr not getting much sympathy from the Rangers fans who are approaching a desperate frame of mind now as their team look for an equaliser. De Vries. Oh, Hunt trying to get in again. Broadford just managed to knock it away. Oh, Hunt didn't know there was a man on then. In Quayla. And Burke had the sun in his eyes then, and Carbonez is racing away. David Weir in the way. Barry Ferguson wanted a free kick then now. And the United have got one, and there's going to be a yellow card for that challenge. Lee McCulloch. McCulloch booked for that uh, tussle with Flood. Dundee United seeking a second, which would leave Rangers with plenty to do, even with Chris Boyd on the pitch. Gary Kenneth ready to launch this. Willie Wilkie is in there with DeVries and Hunt. Kerr. Gomez. Christian Daly. He's been pretty versatile throughout his career. He's now switched to right back after Papach departed the scene. Noel Hunt ready for a long throw. Turned away by Broadfoot. Flood. Buaben. To Greece. It's Gomez. Strong challenge from Quaylar. And now Burke can bring it away. Christian Daly overlapping. Burke for Ferguson. Rangers' need is becoming more and more urgent. 25 minutes left of the CIS final. Broadfoot. Davis. Daly. Ferguson! Blocked by Wilkie. It's an engrossing final, this. Rangers come again at Dundee United. Chris Burke. Stephen Davis. Burke, he's got time to deliver. It needs to be good. And Ferguson! Dashville! And Zaviska got a little nudge from Boyd, but he's gathered it safely, and Dundee United preserved their lead. It's becoming more and more frantic. But that's only natural in a cup final. Davis. 
breaking free of Willow Flood. Now Burke, he's got Daly with him. Still super fit, Christian Daly. Despite his increasing years, that's a goal kick, it's come off Daly. And Rangers are certainly being pushed and pushed in this final. Christian Daly started his career at Dundee United and won his only medal with them. He scored his cup in 94 when they beat Rangers. It was 1-0 to Dundee United on that day, 14 years on in the League Cup final. It's the same scoreline with a quarter of the 90 minutes remaining. Broadfoot. Broadford again. Can he make it happen? Gary Kenneth has been so solid and so dependable for Dundee United today. Preferred to Darren Dodds and on merit, it seems. The Rangers are going to surely throw a lot more in Dundee United's direction. Burke's corner is not great at all. Noel Hunt will head it away. Burke. Ferguson. Burke again. Noel Hunt back defending. The man whose goal has given Dundee United the advantage. Barry Ferguson's long throw. Weir and Boyd and Quayle are all in there. And Broadford has lost out to De Vries. In fact, the free kick's been given to Rangers. For a moment, then it looked like De Vries might break away, and he felt he'd done a little wrong. <laughs> Doesn't look like he did do much wrong. Burke. Carbonez. Strong. Physical. Determined. Dogged. Dundee United just over 20 minutes away from winning the CIS Cup. But when you're in this position, 20 minutes seems an age, and a bit more besides. <whistles> Daly. <laughs> Gary Kenneth just hooking that away from Burke. And Dean added, no, there is still much work to be done if they are to get to grips with some silverware. Daly's throw, Boyd in there. Willow Flood, <laughs> rather composed inside his own box. Kovacevic for De Vries. A stray header from Kovacevic. Darsfield nearly in. Willow Flood, oh, he's lost it. Dundee United looking a bit tired. They've given so much. Stephen Davis. It's a corner. Craig Conway could be coming on soon for Dundee United. Weir, Boyd, McCullough. And a few others loitering with intense, but uh, Kenny Clark not ready with Chris Burke's corner. And he wants a word with David Weir. Weir 37 now, but not too old to be told off. Chris Burke's corner. Cleared by Noel Hunt. Rangers have to plot another route to goal. Broadfoot. Dashville. They probably want him in the box.
tidy, very tidy from Boabin. Tondi United have got a few options here. Gomez. Merrill Hunt. Never likely to get near that. <laughs> Not impressed with the quality of service. Willow Flood. Upending Burke in full flight. Well, for the likes of Dundee United, they dream of the days when they can get one over the old firm, the Giants of Glasgow. Even better if it happens in a cup final, but here come Rangers again. And a free kick given against Chris Boyd. And their frustrations increase as the seconds tick away. Still time to save this final. Boyd grappling with Wilkie. Dundee United with Buaban and Gomez. Long way out of that. Gomez from distance. He scored his first goal for Dundee United in the semi final of this competition when they trounced Aberdeen. Fancied one in the final then. Pendulum is still swinging in Dundee United's favour. Can they hold on for a famous victory over Rangers? Gary Kenneth launching that. Turned away by Broadfoot. McCulloch. Christian Daly. Giving Chris Burke something to chase, but he's not going to get to it. A forlorn chase for Burke. And we're almost into the last quarter of an hour. Rangers busy schedule, perhaps catching up on them, but Dundee United refusing to budge an inch as well. from the touch on is that Mill Hunt, the goal scorer, may well be coming off, feeling the effects of a knock, perhaps. But he's told the bench that he wants a few more minutes. So Craig Conway has to wait for his appearance in this final. Kenneth up towards Tedris with his long throw. Fifteen minutes left. Ferguson. Dashville. Well, nobody was supporting the strikers then. Dashville bundled to the ground by Kovacevic. Rangers leaving it a little late. Stephen Davis with the free kick. It's Carlos Cuellar. Could be an unlikely provider. Gary Kenneth with him. Cuellar in for Burke. And Burke still there. Trying to take on too many, perhaps. A spirited display from Dundee United and a free kick for Rangers here. Quayla was grounded. It was taken quickly. And Darsville has put it in, but too quickly for Kenny Clark's liking. 
He had blown his whistle, to be fair. No doubt about it, the whistle had gone. Rangers will be hoping for a similar outcome from the free kick, mind you. But it is eventually taken again. Is this a key moment in this match? Chris Burke floats it in. Broadfoot sends it back. Up by Daly. Offside against Chris Boyd. And it's still not happening for Rangers. Not sure why Boyd had strayed so far. Lackadaisical, really. Rangers haven't lost a domestic match since the end of October when they were beaten by Dundee United in the SPL at Tannadice. Well, he's tried to battle on, but he's limping away now. Will Noel Hunt's goal prove decisive and win the CIS Cup for those fans? As usual, he's given his all and a bit more besides, as well as scrambling in the goal. It's replaced by Craig Conway, who uh, can certainly cross the ball, and with Mark De Vries up there, that could come in handy. One of the best of kicks from Zaluska, but it still, funnily enough, could lead to something. Stephen Davis winning it back for Rangers, cross comes Willow Flood. Christian Daly has not that on. Boyd now trying to feed Burke. Flood. Stephen Davis upon him quickly. Throw from Gary Kenneth, flicked on by De Vries. Have Rangers got an answer? The cry is going out from the Glasgow Giants. Will someone answer their call? Dundee United are just over 10 minutes away from glory. Might not sound long, but it will feel long. Well, the Rangers haven't really threatened as much as they would have liked. And Zaluska hasn't been called into action that often. Kenneth launching that. It's left for McGregor. Into the last 10 minutes. De Vries offside. Davis for Ferguson. Now Broadfoot. Darshville, clean handball. Gomez. Here is Conway just on. Superb cross with the ball, they're probably going through me wrong now, but De Vries will thrive on the sort of service that Conway usually provides. If he gets a chance to, that is. Kenny Clark checking for any time wasting tactics. Gary Kenneth strolling across to take a long throw. Shortest throw, actually, and uh, wayward header from De Vries. Meant to send it back to Kenneth. Got it all wrong. Can Rangers rally late on? Broadfoot. 
Well, Kovacevic has done well. And they're streaming ahead in numbers now. It's Kovacevic. Only his second game for Dundee United. And they would have had the goal staring at him then. But he got past David Weir. And he would have had McGregor staring at him too. Tired legs out there now. Gary Kenneth dealing with that. Carbonez. Broadfoot. Up towards Boyd. Can Darsfield get in? He can! Fantastic reaction from Zaluska to keep Dundee United in front. It looked like Darsfield was going to poach an equaliser. The outstretched hand of Zaluska foiled Rangers. And by Ferguson. Davis. Kenneth. There might be a few lobbed into the stands before this game is out. Rangers thought their moment had come here. Chris Boyd flicked it on. Darsfield didn't look favourite, got there. And that is a really smart save from Zaluska. He might be kept busy over the next six or seven minutes. McCulloch's cross. And Gary Kenneth. Knocks it away, but only as far as Daly. Ferguson was too near to Daly, really. But they've picked out Burke. Davis. And he's floated it in. And Lee Wilkie's met it. And Dundee and Lani still have their one-goal lead. And here's Craig Conway bursting away. It's been an excellent effort from Dundee United today. Conway just on. De Vries was waiting for a cross, but it never reached him. And the pressure will be back on Dundee United now as Rangers probe for an equaliser that has eluded them so far. Carvanez giving Wilkie much to do. McCulloch charging in. McCulloch. And Wilkie blocked it. And Mark Kerr. Oh, Kerr with a mistake! And Chris Boyd pounces on that mistake! Honors a sub to save the day. He comes with a guarantee of goals. He's Chris Boyd. And he's rescued Rangers. But Mark Kerr, I think it was, will hang his head with a howler. A short back pass after Dundee United have done so well today. But there's one man you don't want to present with an opportunity like this. Mark Kerr will be kicking himself. What was he thinking of here? Not when someone like Chris Boyd is around. You just don't do that. Kerr with a terrible error. A shocker. And Chris Boyd has made it 1-1. And Kerr will be absolutely distraught because he may well have cost Dundee United the CIS Cup. Better late than never for Walter Smith and Rangers. Darsville now. Well, if Dundee United end up losing this, Mark Kerr, who's been fabulous for them this season, will take some consoling. But you have to say, what on earth was he doing? Broadfoot. Rangers fancy winning it now inside the 90. Broadfoot's cross. So this collecting that.
Another better bat pass that time. Dundee United so close to toppling the mighty Rangers, to beating the Glasgow Giants, to humbling one of the old firm. In the end, they were gifted an equaliser by Mark Kerr's dreadful mistake. And if anyone was going to pounce on it, you can be pretty sure that Chris Boyd was the man. They've not been anywhere near their best Rangers today, but they could still win the CIS Cup. In Leicester, the United regroup and refocus. The Cup is up for grabs in the closing minutes. Carbonez. Wilkie. Here's Blood. And Dundee United recover from Kerr's clangor. Conway! Suddenly saw the top corner in his mind, but unfortunately it was near the top corner of the stand at Hamden. Darsville. Rangers certainly looked more lively since Darsville and Boyd arrived from the bench. Broadfoot. Away by Wilkie. Gary Kenneth. Rangers feel they've got the upper hand now. In the last minute of the 90, the word from the touchline is there's going to be three minutes added on. Extra time beckoning, but here's Chris Burke. And Burke sends it across, and Wilkie just stopped it, reaching Boyd and Darcyville. It's a corner for Rangers who want to get this cup sewn up inside normal time. Burke's corner. Waylar not allowed to get too near it. Crowded out. Oh, it's a free kick now for Rangers. In a cracking position for them. Conceded by Calvinus. The 90 minutes are almost up. And Rangers are hungry for glory now. After a mostly frustrating afternoon. Can they clinch the cup? We go into three minutes of stoppage time. Chris Boyd with an equaliser presented to him by Mark Kerr. The Rangers fans sensing that a winner might be theirs now. Ferguson floats it in. Quaylar can't get to it. And Dundee United hang on in there. Broadfoot. Out by Wilkie. Here's Kerr. He won't be passing it back, that's for sure, to his keeper. Kenneth. He might have showed too much of that to Davis. Here's Christian Daly. He never looks tired, despite his advancing years. 34 now. It's the first time he's played in the Scottish League Cup for 12 years. Might as well do it in the final. Ferguson, two minutes of stoppage time remaining before extra time at Hamden Park. Daly's got some room though, and Gary Kenneth has to steer that away. And if anyone's going to win it, it looks like Rangers just now. Christian Daly's long throw, away by Carbonez. Davis. Kerr. Now he's fed Conway. Dundee United not giving up on it just yet. Here's Flood. And he's been fouled. Now, this is going to be interesting. Conaku was booked earlier. 
treading a thin line. A free kick in the last minute of stoppage time, and surely somebody's got to go for it here. Somebody's got to go for it for Dundee United. Flood and Conway standing over it. A chance to win the cup in the final minute of stoppage time. It's left to Willow Flood. On loan from Cardiff. And Bar holds its breath. It's Willow Flood, it's against the wall. All rather disappointing for Dundee United. Never ever looked like it was going to go over the wall from Willow Flood, and that's that. That's extra time in the 2008 CIS Insurance Cup final. Chris Boyd left on the bench again, but coming on to score again. That's what he does, that's his job, and he does it rather well. His 65th goal in 96 matches for Rangers, but it was presented to him on a plate by Mark Kerr, who will be absolutely distraught. It's going to take some getting over, you can see it in him. Dreadful back pass. Craig Levine <laughs> doesn't have much to say to Kerr, but Dundee not ever got to get on with it now. They'll be tired, they've given their all in this final, that is for sure. But Rangers, of course, have had a busy, hectic schedule themselves. They played in Germany in the week against Werder Bremen, where they had to defy the odds and hang on for an aggregate victory. It's probably the last thing they wanted, but they had to take it, having been behind for so long. And the managers now want to do their bit to encourage their teams for an absorbing, engrossing final has another 30 minutes to play out, and if they can't separate themselves, we will have a penalty shootout. Craig Levine telling Craig Conway what to do, and he'll have the freshest legs of all for Dundee United, who can still make two changes, by the way, just can only make one. They brought on Darsville and Boyd, but it was a case of needs must. And they certainly spark Rangers, the two subs. Well, you have to feel for Mark Kerr. He's been one of their best players throughout this season. And probably, if he was in that situation again, 99 times out of 100, he wouldn't try a back pass. He'll never try one again in his life now, you suspect. But they're in it together. Time to regroup, rethink and refocus. Now Ollie McCoy is giving Jean-Claude Darshville some advice. And that'll be advice worth listening to. McCoy, a Rangers legend. They'll be feeling a bit tired, they'll be feeling a bit jaded, but adrenaline will keep them going. He'll be quite fresh, having come on, and having equalised. So often lately he's been left on the bench, and he always looks the moodiest, grumpiest person around when that happens. But when he comes on, the smiles are usually never far away, because a goal is usually never far away for Chris Boyd. Tension is rising at Hampden Park as we prepare for extra time in the 2008 CIS Cup Final. <laughs> Puff of the cheeks from Walter Smith. Rangers gunning for four trophies. Top of the league, still in the Scottish Cup. They play Partick Thistle at Ibrox in the quarter-final this week. And they're in the quarter-finals of the UEFA Cup. And here they are in extra time in the CIS Cup final. That's the way they'd want it, really.
Gary Ferguson and Lee Wilkie. One of them will be lifting the CIS Cup later. I suppose Rangers now will uh, feel that they hold a psychological advantage done the United so close to beating them. A real sucker punch conceding so late. Here we go then. Extra time at Hampden Park. And if that doesn't decide who wins the CIS Cup, we will have a penalty shootout to add to the intense suspense. Spotted juggling from Morgado Gomez, who had a trial at Chelsea not so long ago. And Saluska having to scramble as Lee McCulloch had a dig just wide. And there's another Dundee United contact there from Willow Flood, which actually set up McCulloch quite nicely. But he dragged it well wide in the end. Kenneth. Lee Wilkie. Kovacevic. Kurt, who has to get over that mistake. And concentrate on the job in hand now. Is Boyd. And Boyd losing out rather too easily for Rangers liking to Kovacevic. Broadfoot. Ferguson. And it's going to be a corner. Kovacevic having to send it over. Barry Ferguson are broke into the box. This point wasn't far away. In fact, the uh, whistle had gone against Rangers. Davis. Darshville flattened by Wilkie. Ferguson will stand over the free kick. Darshville. McCulloch was waiting for a, a flick, which never materialised, and now Kerr has it. Kovacevic. Up towards De Vries. Willow Flood runs onto it. He's a tidy player. Gomez, away by Quayla. Flood and Quayla having to challenge Conway. Chris Burke will get a free kick. Carvin has shown a yellow card, so he has to uh, tread carefully throughout extra time now. Desperate lunge, really. Well worthy of a yellow card. Dundee United are going to bring on David Robertson soon, who's more than capable of getting a goal for them from midfield. David Weir. 37 years of age now, but 
almost ageless at times. He'll cope with extra time, all right. Broadfoot in towards Darsfield, away by Calvinez. Darsfield challenging again. Burke. Ferguson. Willow Flood. So tenacious. Left Ferguson dumped on his backside, and not many do that. Now Conway. Guarvin. De Vries. He's done it. Dundee United are back in front. The fabulous finish from Mark De Vries. It looked like Rangers might get the upper hand in extra time, but De Vries and Dundee United had other ideas. And Rangers are going to have to come from behind again. De Vries stepped past Broadfoot and unleashed a beauty into the bottom corner. It flew past McGregor, who might have got some fingertips to this. He did, but it wasn't enough. And it's Dundee United 2, Rangers 1. Five minutes into extra time at Hamden. And this really has been a gripping cup final. Rangers have to respond again. Ferguson's free kick. Well, the biggest sigh of relief will come from this man who's on the ball now. Mark Kerr, after his error, allowed Chris Boyd an equaliser near the end of the 90. We'll be buying Mark De Vries a pint or two tonight if Dundee United hang on this time. They're going to make a change. David Robertson, his dad. Doogie played for Rangers briefly. He's going to come on in place of Guarvin. Dundee United fans thought their chance had come and gone. Guarvin told to get a move on by Kenny Clark. David Robertson. Scored six goals this season. Likes to break into the box from midfield. So Dundee United ahead for the second time in this cup final. Mark De Vries, who played for Craig Levine at Leicester and at Hearts. Has given Levine a chance to get a firm grip on this trophy again. Rangers' hectic schedule must be catching up with them now. Dundee United rejuvenated by De Vries's goal, although Gomez rather ran out of steam then. It's still going to take a superhuman effort from Dundee United in extra time, but can they do it? Can they win this cup? Boy came on to rescue Rangers, but now they need him or someone to do it again. Willow Flood. Calvinez. Conway bursting into the box, but Quaylar was always going to marshal that away. Flood. Calvinez. Gomez for Kerr. Carvanez. Firm header from Quayla. 
slapped out by Gary Kenneth. There might be some more desperate defending to do for Dundee United over the next 20 minutes. Quela. Broadfoot. Kenneth away. Here's David Weir. Ferguson. McCulloch. No foul. Fairly won by Robertson. Flood. Broadfoot. Turned away by Wilkie for Kovacevic. Gomez. It's hobbled over Flood's boot. Carlos Cuela. Burke. Christian Daly. Out muscled by Carvinez. Daly felt he was fouled. Well, the assistant referee couldn't have been closer. Tom Murphy. Ferguson. Here's Broadfoot. Kovacevic now for Robertson. David Weir, who played in their League Cup final for Hart 11 years ago, lost to Rangers 4-3, he actually scored in that final. Mind you, Hart's got their revenge the following year when they beat Rangers in the Scottish Cup. Broadfoot. Ferguson. Daly. Burke. Burke getting busy, but there were three Dundee United players in front of him. And they're looking to protect what they have. And what they have is a 2-1 lead over Rangers in the first period of extra time in the CIS final at Hampden Park. And as it stands, Lee Wilkie will be lifting the cup. A few outside of Rangers would deny him that. He's been hampered by serious cruciate ligament injuries, which threatened his career at one point. Gomez, Gary Kenneth, he's been superb today, but then most have for Dundee United. Quayla, Daly, it's gone out. Eddie Thompson there. The Dundee United fans have seen him on the big screens here at Hampden. The chairman, who is bravely fighting cancer. Dundee United were so determined to win it for him today. It looked like they would until Chris Boyd pounced on Mark Kerr's error near the end of the 90. But Mark De Vries soon smacked Dundee United back in front. David Weir. Boyd grappling with Wilkie. Only one winner there. The Willow Flood gets a throw off McCulloch. Rangers have won their last eight League Cup finals, but have they met their match today? Conway chasing this, away by Quaylar to Daly. Oh. 
Chris Kirk has lost out to Carbonis. Now Conway. There's no way past Quayla though. And a foul by Conway. Dundee United haven't conceded more than one goal since they lost 2-0 at Rangers in the league in January. On by Boyd. On by Kerr for De Vries. Robertson will leave it for Willow Flood. And a hint of handball there. Robertson. Dundee United told to get a move on. There's a minute of first half stoppage time in extra time. In fact, not even a minute, half a minute as it turned out. This final has swung back in favour of Dundee United, and there's the reason why. Mark De Vries, but credit to Willow Flood, who won the ball off Barry Ferguson, which started the move. Craig Conway played his part. So too did Prince Buaban, and then taking the lead role, Mark De Vries. A glorious goal, which could yet bring glory to Dundee United, who must have thought, must have thought this final had veered away from them after Chris Boyd had equalised. But they lead 2-1, and they are 15 minutes away from lifting some silverware. It's been a monumental effort from them today. Can they keep it going for another quarter of an hour and avoid a penalty shooter? The second period of extra time at Hampden Park. Dundee United can reach out and touch the cup, but they cannot grab it yet. Christian Daly. Carlos Cuela. Broadfoot. David Weir launching that. Willow Flood. Helped on by Robertson. Christian Daly pops it back. Gary Kenneth nearly caught out. Dundee United. Defended doggedly all afternoon. Burke. Making some room for the cross. Lee Wilkie clears it. Stephen Davis, though, for Christian Daly. Burke. Here's Gomez. Offering a bit more than just uh, temporary relief for Dundee United because they have a few up here. Willow Flood. Lost his footing. And David Weir crashed in to scoop things up from the Davery. Now Burke. Rangers need his urgent and it has been a few times this afternoon, but Burke. Shrugged, shrugged away by Carbonus. Brushed aside. Here's Kerr. He'll definitely uh, be going forwards rather than backwards after that horrible back pass gifted Chris Boyd an equaliser. Kovacevic. Surprise starter ahead of Sean Dillon. 
at right back. Two games for Dundee United, one against Celtic, one against Rangers. It's not like this every week. Davis. Darsville. Wilkie trying to dig it out. Hey, Wilkie's had an injury stricken career. Victory today would mean a lot to him. Broadfoot, though, delivers, and Gary Kenneth, as he has done often, meets it. Broadfoot will take this throw. Oh, it's going to drop here for Boyd! Overhead and over the goal. It was always going to be difficult, there was a clutch of defenders around him. Not much room to manoeuvre. Harry Kenneth got very close. Very close. And Carbonis came in as well. Kovacevic, Flood, just over ten minutes for Rangers to launch another salvage operation here at Hampden Park, they've bounced back once before in the nick of time, they're going to have to do it again in the nick of time, up towards Boyd, who's still lurking, Foul by Boyd on Wilkie. He had a kick at Wilkie then. Well, the boot was certainly very high. Has to be high to catch Lee Wilkie where it did. One more change available for Walter Smith and Ali McCoist. Stephen Whitaker and Kevin Thompson, the remaining outfield players on the bench. Whitaker could offer them something going forward. In fact, Stephen Whitaker, who is on the Rangers bench, could, could have made history today by becoming the first player ever to win the League Cup. Two years running with different clubs. He did it with Hibs last year. As yet, though, he's not played a part this year, and Rangers are trailing. But here's Burke, and Mark Kerr quickly across to snuff out any danger. Gomez has given Davis a glimpse of the ball. De Vries. Christian Daly saw that one coming his way. Kenneth the Scottish League Cup gave Dundee United their first ever honour back in the 1979-80 season it was uh, the first trophy won by legendary manager Jim McLean who's assistant manager was Walter Smith. Stephen Whittaker is going to be coming on for Rangers shortly. Kirk Broadfoot's throw. Will it fall favourably here? Burke trying to get in. McCulloch saved by Zaluska, backed by Davis. And Boyd, it's in. He's only gone and done it again. Chris Boyd is a master at rescuing Rangers. Dundee United, heartbroken. Boyd has scrambled another goal. And they have bounced back again. It was always awkward. Saluska couldn't hold it. He stopped McCulloch there. But Davis delivered. And Boyd 
managed to jump to the head of the queue. Natural-born goal scorer, Chris Boyd. Ali McCoy was jumping as well. And Rangers are jubilant. Rangers are level at Hampden Park. And Dundee United have twice been ahead. Must be wondering what they have to do to win the CIS Cup. What they have to do is to go ahead a third time, perhaps, or consider themselves lucky if it comes to a penalty shootout. It's becoming an epic final, this. An absolutely epic final. What a cracking contest. Kenneth's long throw. And Mark Kerr on the volley. That would have been a story. After his error. Let Rangers back into his game first time around. One minute, one set of fans are singing, the next minute, the other set is. It's been a long afternoon at Hampden Park. And we are six minutes away from penalties. Rangers looking to go ahead for the first time this afternoon. And this would be a good time to do it. Carlos Quaylar's come up for it. Ferguson floats it in Quaylar's direction. Everyone calls for it, and the verdict is a corner. And the Rangers fans at that end are hoping that their team can snatch a winner that uh, not so long ago seemed rather unlikely. Burke's corner. Cleared by Calvinus. It wasn't a great corner. Hasn't been a great display from Burke today. It's gone out. Inside the last five minutes of extra time. We've had a few twists and turns today. Is there going to be another one? Chris Burke. And he's going to be replaced here for the final few minutes by Stephen Whitaker, who won the CIS Cup with Hibs last season, bidding to become the first man to win it two seasons running with different clubs after leaving Hibs for Rangers last year. Christian Daly ready to take this throw. What's going to happen next in this final? Flicked on by Boyd. McCulloch has got in ahead of Kenneth. He's got a cross in two, but Zaluska will come and claim that. Chris Boyd takes his tally to 66 goals in 96 games for Rangers. 12 in 16 matches against Dundee United throughout his career, but then he's got that sort of record against most teams, to be fair. Here's Conway. Conway's cross. Campbell, Mark De Vries. Just for a moment, Dundee United thought they might be in again. Here's Ferguson, the captain looking to inspire Rangers. And he's going some here. Whitaker almost took over. Davis. Daly. Okay. Spot of arm wrestling from Christian Daly. We are three minutes away from penalties. No wonder he's checking his watch. Rangers twice looked down and out, but Chris Boyd twice kept them going. 
Harry McCoyce poached a few goals in his time for Rangers, a few hundred goals, in fact. Chris Boyd could end up doing the same. He's not been a regular starter in Walter Smith's system, but he still makes an invaluable contribution to the cause when he comes on. Dundee United have got an intriguing free kick, though. A tangle between De Vries and Quayle. I didn't look an awful lot in that, actually. Can Dundee United go ahead for the third time in the CIS final? And if they do it now, surely they'll hang on and win the cup. The Dundee United fans behind that goal hoping and praying. It's in by Willow Flood, but it's drifted away from David Robertson and from Christian Calvinez. And we are drifting towards a penalty shootout. Two, two. The last minute of extra time is upon us. It really has been. A gripping contest between these two teams. Dundee United twice thought they had the cup in the bag. Chris Boyd twice thought otherwise. And he's on a hat-trick now. And wouldn't that be an amazing end to this cup final? Were he to get one? Because there are a matter of seconds remaining. It would be so cruel on Dundee United if Rangers were to nick a winner here, but that can happen in football. Dashville. It's a corner. And there should be just about time for it. It doesn't get more tense or nervous than this. A corner for Rangers right at the end of extra time. One minute of stoppage time. Now it's the time to do it, Rangers. Stephen Davis with a corner. De Vries back there helping out. Frantic now, McCulloch. Amsaliska should grab that. He takes it off the top of Barry Ferguson's head. <laughs> and penalties look a cert now. As if we hadn't had enough drama. Late on in normal time, Chris Boyd equalised. Late on in extra time, Chris Boyd equalised. Dundee and Addy thought they'd got to grips with the CIS Cup. But Chris Boyd wasn't having it. Oh, no, he never does. Boyd with a daring double to add to his amazing tally for Rangers. And we have a penalty shootout to decide who wins the CIS Cup. And by the way, he's normally pretty good at penalties as well. We hear the penalties will be taken at the Dundee United end, by the way. But now the two teams have to get together sort out the penalty takers this long afternoon will end soon with a victory for one defeat for the other such is the agony and ecstasy of football somebody's going to be a hero soon Mark De Vries thought it was going to be him in extra time fabulous goal to fire Dundee United in front, but once again they couldn't hang on, and once again Chris Boyd pounced. And the 2008 CIS final will be decided on penalties. It has been a gripping and gruelling day at Hampden Park. De Vries pondering what might have been. 
It would be so harsh on Dundee United if they end up losing here. But it's always the sign of a good team that they never know when they're beaten, and Rangers never did know. Still a shake of the head from De Vries, though. As Craig Levine tries to whip up delirium in the Dundee United section. His team have given their all and a bit more besides. You have to when you face the old firm. Alan McGregor and Lucas Zalusko will be central figures in the drama that is about to be played out here at Hampden. They're still believing, and why not? It could go either way, such is the way with penalty shootouts. Who knows who will be a hero? Who knows who will be a villain? Alan McGregor preparing himself. Time as backup keeper at Rangers McGregor, but now very firmly established as number one, challenging Craig Gordon for the Scotland number one jersey too. Lucas Saluska injured for the first half of the season, but about to play a very big part for Craig Levine. They were desperate to do this for their cancer-stricken chairman Eddie Thompson. They still might. Walter Smith's Rangers have refused to lie down and take defeat here at Hampden. It's been an afternoon of high drama already. The drama is about to get even better. The ups and downs of a penalty shootout lie ahead. to find out in a penalty shootout to decide who wins the CIS Cup. Mark Kerr full of thoughts to his mistake towards the end of normal time, allowed Rangers to level it. They've used a couple of get out of jail cars today, Rangers. Kenny Clark tossing a coin to see who goes first. Barry Ferguson giving his goalkeeper a hug and he'll be hoping to give him an even bigger hug in five or ten minutes or so if McGregor does his bit. And United hoping Saluska might have fortune on his side. So, here we go with all the drama of a penalty shooter. Willow Flood on loan from Cardiff. He's missed out on the chance to play at Wembley with them, but he's got to play at Hampden with Dundee United. Another tenacious, terrific display from him today, and he is first up in this shootout. Willow Flood. Gets Dundee United off to a perfect start in the shootout. It's never nice going first, but it is when you do that. Into the roof of the net. No chance for McGregor. Jean-Claude Darcheville, who came on as a sub, feels the heat now. Dundee United have scored their first penalty. Can Rangers score their first penalty? Massive moments 
every step of the way in this shootout. It's Darcyville against Aluska. And he's missed it! Back off the bar! Darcyville fails! Advantage Dundee United! So close, yet so very far from Darsville. It's Craig Conway next up. Oh, and Conway has missed. They battered the post. Darsville against the bar, Conway against the post. And Rangers could yet level it up. Back off virtually the inside of the post from Craig Conway. And Stephen Whitaker could level it in the shootout. He won this cup last year with Hibs. He wants to win it again with Rangers and make history in doing so. A Whitaker! with an emphatic penalty into the corner. In off the post, no stopping that. And Rangers have recovered. Mark De Vries, who put Dundee United 2-1 up in extra time, steps forward now. He's trying to look calm. But inside, there must be an awful lot happening. We go through the motions and emotions in penalty shootouts. De Vries, McGregor, battle of wits. And De Vries did stay very cool. Very, very cool. He's done his bit again. Dundee United, 2-1 up. And the pressure is about to fall on Stephen Davis now. On loan from Fulham, but a Rangers fan, he had a trial as a 12-year-old with them. Probably thought his chance to play for Rangers had passed him by, but not so. <laughs> Stephen Davis, Rangers fan, and he makes a few more Rangers fans <laughs> rather happy because he tucked that away with no problem whatsoever. It's 2-2, with two penalties left, before we go to sudden death. Sometimes you just don't want to look. David Robertson, next up. Here he comes, Robertson. Oh, McGregor has made... A fantastic save! And the penalty pendulum swings in favour of the Glasgow Giants. Rangers joyous. Lee McCulloch about to step up. And he could put Rangers 3-2 up in the shootout and Dundee United would then have to score their last kick. Here comes McCulloch, and it's saved as well! Zaluska! What an extraordinary penalty shootout this is! And even though there's one of the five left, well, it's sudden death already. Well, well, who'd have thought it? Lee Wilkie, the Dundee United captain, is next up. They've both scored two, they've both missed two. Lee Wilkie wants to get his hands on the cup. Oh, McGregor has saved it, it wasn't convincing from Wilkie. And Rangers are seconds away from winning it. And Lee Wilkie may not get to grips with the cup, it wasn't a great penalty. And wouldn't you just know it, Chris Boyd is going to be last up for Rangers. The man who's two goals but took this game to a penalty shootout.
could now win the trophy for Rangers. Chris Boyd, yes or no? Yes! Of course it's yes! It's always yes where Chris Boyd is concerned. The day belongs to Boyd. The cup belongs to Rangers. He started off on the bench, as he often has done lately, but he came on to have his say on this day. And I suppose the fact that he was taking the final penalty, well, it was written in a script somewhere. It just had to be. Alan McGregor did his bit as well. But Rangers twice had to bounce back in normal time, in extra time. But they've had the last laugh. They've had the last word. Maybe one day Chris Boy will get to start a game quite often. But when he comes on and does what he did today, well, maybe they'll keep him in reserve. Lee Wilkie missed Dundee United's last penalty. You have to feel for him. A man whose career has been beset by injuries and he cannot control his emotions. Consoled by Carlos Coelho there. Dundee United distraught. Absolute agony for them. Twice ahead against Rangers. That doesn't happen very often. And Dundee United probably feel they did enough to win today. But after two trophyless seasons, Rangers are back in the silverware business. They've seen off a bold, brave, epic challenge from Dundee United. Eddie Thompson. Dundee United's cancer-stricken chairman applauding the efforts of his team and those efforts were supreme today. Sometimes things just weren't meant to be but Dundee United could not have come much closer to clinching the CIS Cup. Rangers though, well, big teams, big clubs never know when they're beaten. They were minutes away from losing when Chris Boyd capitalised on an error from Mark Kerr, who will be more distraught than most in the Dundee United camp. Mark De Vries fired Dundee United back in front in extra time, but Boyd popped up again, and no wonder he's the central figure here. Not only did he score in normal time in extra time, it was his penalty that clinched the cup for Walter Smith after Alan McGregor had made a massive contribution to the course as well. Walter Smith wins the first trophy of his second spell as manager and there could be more to come sooner rather than later. Rangers also in the hunt for the SPL title, the Scottish Cup and the UEFA Cup. One down, three to go. The CIS Cup is theirs. Noel Hunt opened the scoring for Dundee United, but had to go off injured. Mark Kerr there will be full of remorse and regret after an error that allowed Rangers back into the game. And Dundee United tearily make their way up as losers. A performance to be proud of, but that probably doesn't feel like too much consolation. Tangerine dreams have faded. Even so, though, the team from the City of Discovery have rediscovered themselves over the last year and a half. Their dreams didn't quite come true today. But they are a team transformed, and they are still chasing third place in the SPL. And their fans appreciate what their team gave them today, and so does the chairman. But you've got to be good, you've got to be focused every second of the way to get the better of the old firm. And one or two slips proved costly. Presentations now to the match official, the referee is Kenny Clark, assisted by Tom Murphy and Chris Young, and the fourth official is John Underhill.
Rangers have a trophy late in history. This is their 108th major honour, a world record. And Barry Ferguson will lead Rangers up. He's already won this competition four times. Make that five now. It's been an epic encounter between Dundee United and Rangers in the CIS Cup final. And Dundee United sure took some beating. Rangers can consider themselves a little fortunate. But they've done it. They've won it. After two seasons without a trophy, the CIS Cup is theirs. And Walter Smith will be hoping it's not the last trophy they win this season. Alan McGregor did his bit in the penalty shooter. David Weir at the age of 37 and Christian Daly at the age of 34 get to grips with the CIS Cup. It's only the second trophy that Daly has won. The first was the Scottish Cup with Dundee United. Chris Boyd, though, is the man who has made this possible. Master goal scorer, natural born goal scorer. The biggest cheer is reserved for Chris Boyd. A bit part player in recent weeks. A big, big, big part player today. Ali McCoy is watching on proudly. He still kicks every ball and heads every ball. Rangers have reinvented themselves after a pretty messy spell under Paul Le Guin, who fell out with Barry Ferguson, stripped him of the captaincy. Ferguson was always likely to last rather longer than Le Guin. They're still chasing the SPL title. They're still chasing the Scottish Cup. They play Partick Thistle in the coming week. They're still in the UEFA Cup and they might just fancy getting through to the semis, sporting Lisbon away in the quarterfinals. All that's to come. Today's the day for the CIS Cup and it belongs to Rangers Football Club. They were pushed all the way, a very long way, by a spirited, dogged and determined Dundee United. But they're the old firm, and as Celtic have shown so many times over the years, you can never write them off until final whistles go. Chris Boyd twice rescuing Rangers, and then scoring the decisive penalty. The Boyd done good, and Rangers have won the CIS Ali, Cup. Ali, that's three years, Rangers haven't got a trophy, you've got it now, how does it feel? It feels absolutely tremendous, it really does. Um, my voice is away, I've lost my voice. But I'll tell you what, what a game of football it was, in terms of excitement, and uh, both teams just wanting to win the game. Um, unfortunately, most of the penalties, it has to be, has to be a loser, but we're just absolutely thrilled to, to win it, we really are. Were there ever any doubts that showed great spirit from Rangers? There was never any doubts with so great spirit, but there was plenty of doubts. The D United played very, very well. And I'll be honest, you, when, I, when I thought we'd get the goal to equalise the first time round, I thought we were favourites, but to be fair to them, they came again and scored. But you know something? Our lads have got an amazing, amazing resilience, and I think that's what saw them through today. Ali, you, all, you know all about poaching goals. A word about Chris Boyd. Sensation. I'm absolutely thrilled to bitch them. Um, Chris Boyd's the best in the business at doing that, and he showed that again today. And well, what about these fans, Ali? It means so much to them. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, three years is a long time for a, a club like ours not to be winning things. And I thought they got behind the team today and were fantastic. You know, and it's uh, it's obviously for the, for the players to win something, it's a real boost, but also for the fans, they've thoroughly enjoyed the day. And this must give you a massive boost. Here we are at the business end of the season, a Rangers still chasing trophies in three other competitions. Absolutely. It was important that we got the win today because had we lost today, it might have had a wee adverse effect on us. But they've showed uh, 
as I said, they've showed a wonderful spirit and they've got the first trophy in the, in the cabinet. And I'll let you talk to the main <laughs> man. Congratulations, Ali. Alan McGregor, a bit of a hero today. What does this mean to you, Alan? It means uh, amazing amounts, you know. Been here since I was 12 years old at this club. Obviously, I've been on the bench in days like this, but to be part of it, it's just unbelievable. What was it like to play in Alan? Because from where we were sitting, it was a sensational final. It was unbelievable. They came out right for the start. I thought uh, the first half we were quite poor, but the second half we showed determination and guts. And then we went down again in uh, an extra time, and then what a shift all the boys put in. See, after Thursday night, it's an unbelievable performance. Did you have a philosophy there in the penalty shootout? Uh, I saved some of them. <laughs> it means so much to these fans, doesn't it? I think it means so much to every one of the players as well. Been through a lot of hard work, a lot of games this season. And I've been here a long time, but I just love it. Look at the fans, are brilliant. And you can kick on from here to the end of the season in three other competitions. Hopefully, I we're going to put that at the back of my mind. I'm going to put that at the back of my mind and just enjoy this occasion. Congratulations, Alan. Yes. Let's go. Well, Ali McCoy's nearly lost his voice. Rangers nearly lost this cup, but Chris Boyd won it for them. They beat Dundee United on penalties after an amazing afternoon at Hampden Park.